Okay, Brambro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War. Got a CSA campaign going on here in version 1.06, which is the live version of the game. And we are in mid-October, almost to the end of the uh, 1862 campaign season. Winter will be coming. Whether that means that the Union will stop moving around all over the map is a different question. <clears throat> Just to kind of broad brush real quick recap, I guess, of the campaign. And those who have been following this, this series are going to be quite uh, familiar with this. But we have basically fought a defensive strategy. Didn't mess around in Western Virginia over here. Uh, turns out that that really wasn't, uh, that didn't really go the way that I wanted to with regard to Virginia state support. Uh, but it hasn't sucked up uh, any of our troops into Western Virginia either. We've maintained a hold on Virginia proper all the way up in the Northern Virginia, including the cities of Alexandria and Winchester. And the Union has been fairly quiet here this year. There was a lot of fighting here early in the campaign in 1861. At the beginning of the campaign, ran up into uh, Kentucky here. Basically to provide a buffer to turn Kentucky Confederate so that this is Confederate territory. And here is where we would fight to keep the Union out of Tennessee, which is a far more important state to us. One of the fighting here, not in here. As it turned out, the Union didn't really contest us in Kentucky until very, very recently. Kentucky has been quiet. And then we have this one army over here in Missouri. It's actually the smallest of our armies overall. Uh, only one core in this army, whereas there's multiple cores in these armies. And that was because these were kind of more important areas, and frankly, I expected more fighting over here. But here is where the Union has put its focus for the pretty much the entire campaign. Probably 70% of the battles which have been fought in this campaign have been fought in Missouri. And specifically, right around here in this Springfield, Lebanon area. And it's been, so it's been static. Now, I, I didn't choose to fight all those battles. It's been the Union attacking us. They, they chose to do that. At this point in the campaign, though... This army has done a magnificent job. They've fought uh, a lot of battles. Probably, I haven't counted them up, but probably about 15 battles or so, give or take one or two. And they have bled the Union dry. Well, not dry, because they've got more manpower. But the casualties that the Union has taken in Missouri, even though it looks static on the map, Basically, they've lost the war here. Sterling Price, uh, and then later, once uh, we got an army commander over here, uh, Beauregard, uh, they've done the heavy lifting on winning this war, and it's just about over. The Missouri Army, and also credit goes to the Confederate States Navy, who have cleared the blockade along uh, our Atlantic and Gulf coasts and just finished up uh, very recently, uh, even clearing all the Union uh, naval forces out of the Gulf of Mexico. They've all been run back down and are now licking their wounds at Key West, Florida, where I've got just a couple of scout ships just keeping an eye on them keeping vision on them. So they so the the Navy has won a lot of battles as well. 
So between the Missouri Army and the CSN, Union is on its last legs. Now they still have higher support in the various states. They have a much larger military. And the Army morale, the two armies morale, is pretty close to each other and, and fairly high overall. Actually, I think the Union Army morale is a little bit higher than ours. And of course, the Union economy is bigger, naturally. I, I mean, that's always going to be the case. What is not higher than the Confederacy is the will of the people. And they have had enough from the mounting casualties and continuous defeats in Missouri. And we're now at a point where they just need another little push. And I believe this war is over. We'll see how it works out. And it's time for uh, the Army of Northern Virginia to go into action. Now, there's a lot of federal troops up in here. There's about 140,000 federal troops in and around Washington. Not counting, there's also this West Virginia militia over here, which could become involved, and that's another 31,000. So Lee's outnumbered. He's only got about 80,000 men. Well, he's got a little bit more than that because the Confederate States regular army has come up. And they're, they're just big enough where they can be considered a, a small core. But Hardy's brought the regulars up and has joined the Army of Northern Virginia. And it's time to start uh, pushing these armies out of here and capturing the capital, Washington, D.C. So let's see how many battles it takes to uh, do that. Now, some of our brigades are Virginia brigades, and they are a little bit... Uh, their morale situation is not the best because of Virginia state support. But uh, I think that I think this army is going to do well here. All right. Let's begin the push on Washington, D.C. Okay. Well, let's start by getting this army concentrated making sure that everybody can reinforce. They all look like they're in reinforcement range. However, if we choose Lee's HQ, we can see that the terrain over here is actually kind of running a little funky. Like if uh, one of these cores, if one of, the, if one of these cores, third or first core, were to come up here and attack, I don't think the second corps would get pulled in. So let's get everybody within Lee's visible command radius. It's not always perfectly round. The terrain can uh, impact that. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and get uh, Lee up in here too. Regulars are on their way up in here, and I've got the uh, horse artillery under orders to uh, get back over this way and get in Lee's command radius as well. Kind of stay down here too, so that he can spot West Virginia militia coming across if that happens. All right.
Okay, let's push up here in defensive mode and see if maybe we can get the Army of Northeastern Virginia isolated without being reinforced from these guys over here. Not sure that's going to happen, but we'll give it a try. Let's lead up in here with Jackson's Corps. This might be a preliminary battle, or this might be a big one with all of these armies, or corps rather, uh, involved. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, it's a big one. Okay. So, we've got the Army of Northeastern Virginia, the Army of Occupation, and the Army of Washington. Total of, uh, what is that? 86, a little over 86,000 men. Just for a big round number, we'll say 90,000. And we've got about 80, almost that many, but a hell of a lot more artillery. And out of all that, looks like there's one brigade. This is probably Lomax Cavalry Brigade. That that unit has had morale problems basically this entire campaign. It's kind of a mystery. Well, it's, I mean, it's a Virginia unit, and they've had fighting spirit problems as state support has dropped. But that particular brigade <laughs> was having problems even, be, even when Virginia support was still pretty high. Anyway, this battle should... Open the road to Washington. So let's... And it's being fought on Virginia soil. That's good. So it's actually probably a good thing that uh, we're engaging three of these armies. Let's get in and see what we got. Now we may be attacking here. Uh, okay, nope. I'm feeling pretty good about this because we have a defensive situation. Uh, here is the objective that we are defending the, on the, the New Market and Sudley Road down here. And we don't have all of our troops on the field yet. Matter of fact, right now, the Union has more troops on the field at the moment. But we've got just about the entire map available to us for a deployment. And the federal, the federal entry point, there's one here, the Catharpin place, and one up here. And we, we do need to pay attention on where our forces are coming from. So we've got Jackson's Corps on the field. Yeah, Stewart demoralized. He's got that, he's got that Lomax uh, cavalry brigade. Longstreet arriving in one hour from Alexandria. Magruder arriving in two hours from Manassas Junction. I had always intended for this corps to eventually be commanded by A.P. Hill, and he just never came back from being wounded. Uh, the regulars are coming in one hour from Manassas Junction and the horse artillery may not be here till tomorrow because of how far away they are. Uh, 40, 40, yeah. They'll be coming on Manassas Junction if there's a battle still going when they get here. Okay, so it's Alexandria and Manassas Junction. Where are those? Okay, so we've got uh, most of our reinforcements coming from here, and we also have a, have a core coming from Alexandria. Is that here? Hmm. 
Yeah. So there's another core coming in right behind Jackson, and there is then the rest of our guys are coming from down here. Given that, um, and the objective is here. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna set up uh, pretty much as yeah, we get back this way. Given the shape of the deployment zone up here, I don't think this is where McDowell is. If there were forces here, we'd have flat spots. I am about 90% sure his army is over here. And they're going to want to be coming down probably across the Sudley place here, come down through here, probably along this axis. That's what I would think is most likely but those other armies may be reinforcing from this direction too so we need to pretty much defend all along in here we have 63 engineering points yeah Our main position is going to be here, using all of this open ground for our copious artillery. <laughs> On the paper map, this looks pretty open up here. Uh, <laughs> you get down to maybe not as much. Artillery could have LOS issues up in here. Anyway, I need to set up the defensive position and do a little scouting, see where the Federals are, and I will be back. Okay, so this is the position. Um, objective here. <clears throat> Got a bunch of uh, parapets over here, a bunch of parapets over here. Uh, this position is very strong. I'm not as happy about this one. Uh, because we are kind of giving the Federals some forest in here for cover. <clears throat> and I couldn't really see any good uh, alternatives up this way. <laughs> we had a similar position in a previous battle that was a little bit too far extended all the way over here. So it's a little bit more compact. Uh, Magruder will be coming here in two hours. And my intention is for him to come up and basically man this position uh, the Confederate State regulars will be coming here as well they'll actually show up a little bit before Magruder does and I'm gonna bring him over here kind of as an extra force right in this area um, where if necessary they can extend the flank a little bit over here if needed or anyway they're, they're going to be kind of a reserve force over in this area. Longstreet will be coming here in one hour. And I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with him yet. Initially, I am just going to, I think, bring him over in this area where he can either cross bull run uh, and execute uh, a flanking attack in this direction that may sound familiar. We had a pretty similar geometry in a previous battle. Or uh, he can use this road to march over to this part of the battlefield if necessary. Which will take a while to do. But I think this battle is going to be concentrated more in this area because I've put uh, Wade Hampton's Cav up here. Uh, no, Stuart. Stuart and Lomax are up here. I'm going to run up here and grab this entry point. So what that should do is force all of the reinforcing uh, federal corps or armies, because they don't have army org, to come in 
here or here. You come in right behind uh, McDowell. And then uh, Wade Hampton's Cav, which is Rosser's brigade, they're just up here to get sight of the Federals and monitor their progress. Okay. So that's what's going to set up. Just one core in the field right now, but we're going to have everybody in two hours. So before noon. And they don't really have that for, far to march either. Which is another good reason to set up kind of back here by the objective instead of uh, a more forward position. Okay, I'll be back. Quick snapshot, Lomax and Stewart have captured this entry point. And that pushed both of these armies back to 18 hours. So they were <clears throat> both scheduled to arrive at that point, and they were scheduled to arrive today. One of them was four hours, the other was nine hours. Now they're both at 18 hours. And they could only come in Let's see. They can come in here, uncontrolled, but that's possible. Here. Or here. I think that's it. Yeah. And I don't think there's any compelling reason to Go try to grab this. This would be okay. Meanwhile, the first army, the Army of Northeastern Virginia under McDowell, they've all been spotted all over here, and uh, Rosser's keeping tabs on them. Moving on down. It'll be interesting to see where this brigade goes when he gets to this intersection at Groveton. Let's just have a look. Well, lost spot, lost spot of them. Hmm, he's continuing on down. No, there he goes. Okay, so he's trying to come over here. We need, uh, Well, I thought that Magruder would have plenty of time to get up here in this position. That's starting to look a little dicey. In any case, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so McDowell's army has come and is forming up right in this area, right in front of our position. And... Uh, so I moved Jackson's Corps over a little bit. Early's division is now over here on this side of the road. At the time that they made that move, <laughs> all these forces were way back here in a big clump. So uh, turns out I may not have needed to do that. But actually, we've probably got more forces on this side of the road than we need now. But here early is and here early is going to stay we've got a line of skirmishers here in these woods some federal brigades are starting to come across the creek here on the manassas Sudley road and uh, i think uh shooting is about to begin in earnest we've also got long streets uh core coming to this position they'll get over here kind of uh take care of his cohesion form and then we'll kind of move him this way I think is what we will do with him. I definitely don't need him over here. <laughs> I've got, I went from not enough brigades over here to too many brigades over here pretty quickly. All right. Skirm's over here taking a little artillery fire. I've got him laying down though. I don't know 
why the hell those storms were moving. Okay, well, they've been driven in. They were kind of moving goofy. Happens. Is artillery firing yet? No. Get these artillery about that. Then I'll unlimber them. Those are the it's the regulars artillery. They have wires. Just gonna kind of position the. Cab over here, just to be in place for later if they're needed. Hardy is coming all the way over here. Most of his troops are this way. Let's bring him back to closer to his infantry. Okay, let's get one of McGruder's divisions up into the entrenchments. get these guys in the line first. Oh, Hancock coming right in here on this side. Let's bring this cat forward a little bit and see if there's anything over here that needs to be spotted. skirmishers in.
Three-inch ordnance rifles here. Jackson's uh, artillery division. of any better idea. I guess this is probably about as good a position as Magruder's artillery is going to find here. Looks like Hancock is reformed there. Let's bring those sturms in. getting interesting. They're making a pretty strong attack here. Can bag be starting to take some fire there. right in here. Maxi Greg right in here. And Tolliver right behind him. Let's get this artillery now. Like as good a spot as any. Okay, this artillery needs to come back. Let's see if we can get this artillery back here. We may have a better should be able to fire over the line from about there. Howitzers. Harper's doing fine. Buckley's doing fine. McBride is doing fine. Reinforced parapets. <laughs> Oh, 
thought that Ramser would have, at least this part of his brigade should have shots for him. For some reason he's got a short line of sight, probably because of being blocked by uh, Harper's brigade. This is going okay over here, I think. Well, this has got pretty hot. Posey's already in action. Early's guys banging away. They're doing well on the casualty exchange, I think. We remarked before about how this, so many of the uh, Union infantry seem to be, you know, confined to. Uh, oh, Cummings has a. Cover, cover, spades. Okay. Seemed to be confined to smooth bores, and they had to come just far enough out of the woods where they're not getting woods covered in order to engage. Longstreet marches corps closer, about over to here. Ideally, we inflict enough casualties on this corps that it ends before they get there. 80 something thousand onto the field, which won't which will not be until tomorrow. Let's get some additional fire on Hancock and I'm gonna go ahead and move Ramser out of the entrenchments over here. deliver flanking fire on uh, Hancock, who has come back <laughs> from his initial attack. Okay, he's and ramps are still getting a little bit of cover. Well, like a hump in the ground or something? I don't understand why his range is so short. He's got rifles. What are you doing over here? Firefight continues. Gist or gist. Doing fine. Cummings doing fine. Crazy doing fine. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's get Maxie Gregg out here. I don't know if this artillery is going to be able to hit anything from over here, but let's go ahead and unlimber them at least. See what happens. Yeah, Great. Parker's doing fine. Rams are. Artillery is firing. Ooh. Maybe we took a lot of uh, I don't know if counter barriers 
great perk for just like... I've been putting counter battery on a lot of the battalions, but I don't know if that's a fantastic perk for howitzers. I don't know if bombard's all that great. I don't know if they'll use it very much, but for a howitzer battalion, let's go ahead and give him canister. Double check some of these units for perks. Perked up, perked up. Perked up. <laughs> it's got Ace of Spades, and I'm taking him out of cover. Okay. Let's bring. See you next to Greg over about like this. All right. Oh, somebody's a little Buckner. Okay, that's getting to be a little worse. just going to have to hold on. <laughs> Harper's low on ammo as well. The ramp is going to have to press in here. So these uh, brigades are engaged. Forward. It's a Virginia brigade, by the way, and he's confident. Um, push him up to let's get him over, kind of over here on the other side of Greg. I know you're in open ground, but I think we can push Jones ahead a little bit. Ride still has a fair amount of ammo. Here. 
I don't think Longstreet's really going to be engaged here. Which is okay. We need, we, we need uh, some fresh troops to go into D.C. So it's okay if Longstreet's guys uh, don't do much here. We'll lead with him into D.C. and he'll probably have to fight Patterson's Department of Pennsylvania. Ten thousand casualties to our fourteen hundred. I don't know if we're going to make it to the major though. Still. Coming's low on ammo. Eager. I think this is a Virginia brigade. They're doing fine. In Virginia, anyway. <laughs> See what happens over in Maryland. Taking that roundabout route. There we go. That's better. I don't want you charging, I just want you to shoot him. No, I'll charge these guys. through the woods at uh, this brigade.
to shoot at it. Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah, okay. Wait. Okay. Now, state of minor, but uh, 11,000 casualties to our 16... Hundred, not too many guns lost on both either side. Didn't have that many guns on the federal side to begin with. Okay, and I think the vast majority of those casualties were probably inflicted by Jackson's Corps. Well, it had to be. They, they were pretty much the only ones engaged, which is fine. Saving some strength in the other corps for any more battles that may come along. Almost all by the second corps. Some by the third corps. M Magruder had a division over on the uh, left flank. That was uh, Tolliver and Posey and Maxie Gregg. Okay. The artillery did pretty well. That's three battalions of three inch ordnance rifles there. Nice job. And it was uh, Allegheny Johnson's division. That did the most. I think that was uh, Kenton Harper and uh, those guys there in the middle facing Hancock. Right. Okay, well, let's get out of this. Well, I had meant to carry right on through on the campaign map and uh, perhaps into the next battle. Uh, all in this episode, however, wound up with quite a bit of footage that way that really just needed to break it up. So, cutting this episode off here, uh, but uh, we'll be, be posting uh, the next episode uh, right around the same time. So if you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like the content, then... Uh, Leave a like, leave a comment, perhaps even subscribe. If you're new to the channel, new to the series, linking the playlist here so you can catch up on prior episodes if you like. But at any rate, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it.